Thank you so much for making the time to join us today. Welcome to Agri News. I'm Esther Gishuki. On today's top story, the Food and Agriculture Organization, FAO, is warning that the ongoing locust invasion in the country is posing a serious food security threat. The organization says it has placed the locust invasion at level three emergency, saying it's the worst case scenario to hit Kenya in the past 70 years. The Food World Agency is attributing the invasion to unusual weather and climatic conditions. Swarms of locusts have already ravaged eight counties so far. Changamoto kubwa ni kwamba sehemu sehemu ambazo ziko ni sehemu ziko remote sana. Kwa hivyo inabidi uende masafa marefu sana. Sangine kuna network kama sasa hapa tunataka kuambia wale walio wa, na ndege waje hapa lakini hakuna network. Kwa hivyo hakuna njia ya kuwasiliana. Halafu zina, kila kila siku kuna makundi yanavuka mpaka kuingia. Kwa hivyo resources zinakuwa stretched. Kwa sababu tuko na ndege tano, tuko na helikopta nne lakini county ni tisa. Kwa vile huyu mdudu huwa hayupo hapa nchini. Dawa zake pia hawa wanaweka dawa, hawaeki nyingi kwa sababu wakiweka inakuwa kama hasara. Unaweka kitu ambayo itakuja baada ya miaka 20. Kwa hivyo hivi sasa ndio wengine wanaagiza. Sasa kila tukienda madukani tunaona hazipo lakini pengine hii wiki tuna stock ambayo tunaitumia lakini hii wiki tuliwaambia waongeze stock kwa sababu tatizo lenyewe litakuwa hapa kama miezi miwili mitatu The government will construct houses for victims who were affected by floods in West Pokot and Tana River counties. The CS assures flood victims of government support and also reiterated that locust response measures in affected counties have been fully activated. Uh, we really uh, saw a lot of devastation. Uh, the lager there um, flooded and uh, swept away so many buildings. More than 300 uh, buildings were swept away. The school was not spared either. Um, the road was completely cut off, both from Wajia side and uh, uh, Moyale side. So that the town was actually marooned. They could not uh, have access to food and water. We have mobilized enough food. As we speak, some of the areas uh, where we have sent food, uh, we are unable to reach the villages because they have been cut off. Uh, there's a place not far from here called Kutulo, uh, on the Wajia side. Uh, the bridge has been cut off. We have trucks stuck there from uh, last week. We send a lot of food uh, from Nairobi towards Mandera. This food cannot reach uh, the Kotulo side of Mandera. It cannot reach places like Takaba where they need food. And that is why we have uh, had these uh, police uh, aircraft to airlift food to those specific areas that are marooned by the floods that are cut off from the rest of uh, the county and the country so that we reach those families, we give them food, and not just food, we have also, uh, with the support of Red Cross, been uh, supplying non-food items. 
Now on to some rather sad news from Kawesa village in Kilome constituency, Makueni County, where a family is still shaken after it was forced to rebury one of their own as raging rainwater washed away sizable chunks of their homesteads and farms. Salome Mutua, who had to rebury her husband, blames the standard gauge railway construction project for diverting the course of their waters to their farms. Several other villages are also counting losses. This looks like a seasonal river, but it isn't. It is the trail of destruction on many farms and homesteads in Kawese village, Kilome, Makweni County. Villagers here watch helplessly as what was previously a fertile land has been literally washed away. 61-year-old Salome Mutua is a widow and a mother of six. She has lived in this area in peace for over 25 years, but that peace is long gone. She now lives in fear as she cannot sleep in her own house due to a deep gully caused by soil erosion. As if that is not enough, she has had to rebury the remains of her late husband after the first grave was washed away by raging waters. She goes around her chores but lives in a life of uncertainty. Her latrine has also been washed away. The situation is dire. The residents blame their woes on the SGR project. They say instead of being a blessing, the SGR has turned into a nightmare. They claim the water course was diverted to their farms and homes, causing them the untold suffering. Maji, it was accumulated in one, one place. A lot of them, it in a talk of Bufusana in a Samba area, Mzima, yeah, 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 no, As the long rain season first approaches, the fearful lot says the county and national government's intervention is their only straw of hope. Still in Makueni County, where the county government has launched a rigorous campaign towards establishment of fruit fly free zone within the county. The two year campaign that was launched last week at the county's Agricultural Training Institute provides an opportunity for various actors in the mango value chain to interact and kick off activities geared towards reduction of mango losses due to fruit fly infestation in Makueni County and in Kenya at large. Our reporter Jacqueline Kemonto with more. Speaking while flagging off the six-day roadshow that is aimed at raising awareness on the fruit fly campaign, Makueni County Governor Kivutha Kibwana revealed that the outcomes of this campaign is expected to stimulate mango export and increase incomes for mango farmers and other value chain actors. Ni campaign ya maana sana hii tutashinda Makueni kwa sababu kila mkulima itakuwa sasa ni jukumu letu uh, kuhifadhi miti yake ya matunda plus even the watermelons plus because it affects all those others we will do this and i really commit myself and adelina has committed herself uh, maalim all of us who are here on the ground and i'm sure our mps and our mcas uh, we will all uh, work together so that the support ya wadhamini hawa wetu tunafanya kazi na wao ina ina inakuwa ya maana uh, kwa sisi remember hao watu wamekutana hapa karibu mara saba nikiangalia nilikutana kuanzia tukaenda mapping kwa na msemu zile tunaona tutaanza kama kupilot kuangalia ile process ndio tukue pest free zones the campaign, which is sponsored by several players, among them Makweni and Kitui governments, will sensitize farmers on economic benefits of applying modern pest management technologies to curb the damage caused by fruit flies on the mango fruit. 
USAID believes that the true purpose of foreign aid that comes through USAID and other uh, donors is to end the need for its existence, that our people can be able to do these things by themselves. And so by engaging in these kind of partnerships of uh, many that have spoken here to support efforts like the fruit free, uh, fruit fly free zone in Makwene County, we are supporting Kenya on what we believe and talk about at USAID today as supporting Kenya on its journey to self-reliance. This campaign will help raise awareness among the farmers on economic benefits of applying environmentally friendly pest management technologies, helping smallholder farmers produce high quality mangoes and, minim and, 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 and minimize the post harvest losses. Through this campaign, as well as establishment of the zone in Makweni and eventually in Kitui, we expect that Kenya will achieve export market compliance into the European market and others and increase the export market share for mangoes by 30% and hopefully in the first year. This is huge for communities that USAID cares about in Makweni and Kenya as a whole. This campaign will improve the profits and livelihoods of smallholder farmers and ultimately contribute to putting Kenya on the path to sustainable prosperity. The effort, therefore, represents a significant partnership between national and county governments, donors, civil society, private sector, and the media to improve household livelihoods and spur economic growth. This cannot be done by only one organization, but it's an effort that we all have to work on together. Through the Feed the Future project at USAID, we will invest at least 64 million Kenya shillings in the fruit fly campaign in Makwen and Kitui counties. The resources will be used in the coordination of the media campaign, as we have seen starting, grants to integrated pest management uh, service providers and mango cooperatives for training farmers and behavior change communication around the adoption of improved fruit fly management and mango production technologies. In addition, USAID will also work on ex extensive mango productivity enhancement, not only in Makweni, but other parts of the country. We are faced with the reality of climate change that is uh, making things worse, exacerbating the incidence and frequency of pests and diseases across the country a scenario that is complicating our strategies to increase agricultural exports to external markets, which we have, we have heard about the EU and the Middle East. So the ministry therefore fully encourages the concept of pest-free area, which is a proven management approach for mobile pests around the world. This approach includes employing a united strategy to target pest, a pest habitat within a well-defined area or region to reduce and eradicate the total pest population. The advantage of managing pests using a, 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 a pest-free area model is that pest-free areas can offer a long-term solution to agricultural pest problems as opposed to quick fix solutions on individual crops or farms that happens in most cases in this country. It is in this regard that we encourage collaboration and working together of all. Mango is currently the second most common fruit produced in Kenya after banana. According to Kenya Plant Health Inspectorate Service, KFIS, mango is grown on 49,098 hectares, producing 779,147 metric tons, valued at 11.9 billion Kenya shillings, and accounts for about 21% of the total value of fruits produced in Kenya. Reporting for Farmers TV, I'm Jacqueline Kemunto. <laughs> Up next is a roundup of agricultural stories that have been making headlines in other parts of the world.
Dawn is still hours away when Davy and his crew set off from North Shields in northeast England. The lights of other fishing boats glint on the horizon, but there are far fewer than when Britain joined the EU in 1973. Davy blames Europe's fish sharing quotas. Boats from the continent now take six times more from UK seas than British boats do from European waters. As they land the first catch of the day, Davy says he hopes that after Brexit, Britain can net a bigger share. Our own fleet surely has to come first. When we leave Europe, we've got to be looking at a bigger picture to get a better, sustainable fishing for our own country. Never mind these former lads. Fishing crews like Davies account for less than 0.1% of the UK's economy. But for an island nation like Britain, they're a symbol of independence. Brexiteers even staged a fishing flotilla on the Thames ahead of the 2016 referendum on EU membership. Since then, though, a lot of the promises that negotiations will be easy have proven overconfident. And Davy worries politicians may be promising a pot of gold that isn't there. The trouble is, once again, we've been, we've been promised and promised. And at the last minute, they'll sell you down the river because they've got no spine, any of them. Back in port, last night's catch is being sold to a handful of buyers. They found the haddock, they found eight pound yin, eight pound nine, nine pound yin, nine pound ten. Most of these fish are exported to Europe, making some wholesalers worry that any trade dispute with the EU could be damaging. On a local level here in North Shields, probably 60% of that would, would go to the European markets predominantly. So without access into those markets, um, it would really hit the industry hard. The EU's trade chief has already suggested fish are up for grabs, saying fishing rights could be the price of British access to European financial markets. In a choice between this tiny industry and the vast city of London, Britain's politicians may sacrifice the economic minnow in a bid to steer the wider economy away from the rocks. On today's segment of Sauti Amkulima, we feature dairy farmers from Nyandarua and Kiambu counties who share with us how they keep their records for their farms. We have been, uh, we, we measure milk of each cow every day, every milking time. So we have the, the milking, the milking journals, where every time you, uh, you milk the, the, uh, a cow, we have a weighing scale where we, we put up the, the milk and we measure the kilograms as per that milking time. So we feed it at the books, we have a, we have a journal book where we feed and also on the on the smart cow application application where we, we feed with the we, we get we get information from the smart cow application so that is that is those are the the, the two modules i use in on records so the the benefits of the records that we started we had no we have no records at least for now we we can be able to monitor each and every cow and its production because of the feeding so every time the, 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 there is an influx of the milk, we realize where the problem, where, where the, there is the many changes. And uh, so the recording helps us to keep the crowds track on, on milk produce so, and, and the feeding. So that, those are the benefits we get from the records and also on the profitability of the, of the, of the, of the animals and also on the, on the breeding session. So the breeding, most likely the smart cow application it really helps us to on the building application because we, we we have the system when the the animals were served when the when we expect the animals for first first, first test second test the pd test the when the calving time all those things the 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 the, the, the records they, they 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 help us a lot in those so we use those two systems in recording Record the buses who are in Aweka and record the daily production of Ngombe. Kira Ngombe. In our Asubui, in the Pima Kiasigani, Mchana, Najioni. As an Jumulisha. Now, on Asasa Ngombe, I'm in Ravizuri, I'm in Cochini. Now, Nikiona, I'm in Pungua, Sasana, and Jalibu Kuangali, and Niniki Hasaki, I'm in Pungue. Yon record daily record ya production ya ya maziwa. Pia kuna 
magonjwa kama imekuwa treated na naweka na, na, na kwa record na naangalia na, na, na ndika ni nini ugonjwa gani na ilitindua ilitibiwa na nini pia uh, kuzaliwa ndama inapozaliwa na inaweka kwa record ilizaliwa ikiwa na which weight weight gani 40 50 20 like that alafu sasa naendelea nikipima kitu kingine inaweka record ni deworming huwa naweka record wakati ni deworm after 3 months tena na deworm na na, na huwa na badilisha the dawa za kudeworm Now let's take a look at how different agricultural commodities are performing in different markets across the country. Now it's just about that time where we sample feedback from you and we'll start off. The first one says, hi, I'm very happy for the effort in KTN Farmers TV. Thank you so much. Though you did not tell us your name or where you reside in, thank you so much. We really appreciate the feedback. Keep tuning in to KTN Farmers TV for more exciting and informative shows. And we also have somebody else who says, hi, I'm interested in fish farming in Nanyuki. When will you air the program? Thank you so much for tuning in to KTN Farmers TV. You can catch our fish business show, which airs every Sunday at 7.30 p.m. We also have Duke from Nairobi County, who's, who's just saying thank you for the program. I'm interested in dairy farming please need more information on that thank you so much duke we really appreciate it you can catch our dairy farms show that airs every tuesday at 7 p.m uh, we also have somebody else who says hello you guys are doing an amazing job congratulations and thank you for enlightening us farmers about farming it is our trade and our skill thank you so much we really appreciate the feedback keep tuning in to ktn farmers tv make sure that when you're sending in your feedback start with the word agri news tell us your name and where you're watching us from we will read that feedback every single day here on agri news that's it for today's bulletin thank you so much for joining me i'm esther gishuki and as we wrap up let's have a look at the weather forecast <music> 